How's your week? I hope that the Lord has been good to you. For those of you who are not really feeling well today, I pray that the Lord's strength be your portion. This morning, morning is a wonderful time that we can be together, even through social media. But still we can ask for the presence of God to be with us in our homes. How we wish we are here in the church. But we thank the Lord for the opportunity that we can tune in to God. And our prayer this morning that God will give us a heart of a worshiper. Lord Jesus, we seek you today. We invite your presence. We ask for the angels to come and join us as we sing songs of praise and adoration to your name. Alone, Jesus, we exalt to lift you high because your name is above all other names. You are welcome in our midst this morning.
bright and morning star, you give life to us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You're our Savior. You don't only give us life that is full in the next life, Lord Jesus. But here, here, this time, you've given us life that is full in Christ. Despite, Lord, what we went through throughout the week or in this life, we want to declare that you are our beautiful Savior. Let's sing the choice.
our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you the Lord a clap of praise. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Amen. Let's welcome the Word of God this morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let's come to the Lord in a word of prayer. Lord, we want to thank you for this special day. Thank you that you are here in our midst, regardless of the circumstances we face, your promise is true. Never will you leave us, never will you forsake us. And so we are confident that wherever we are, we may be scattered in different homes today because of this pandemic, but just the same, we can worship you as a family. Corporately, we come before your presence. We seek to honor your name. We want to give you praise. With thankful hearts, we approach the throne of grace, knowing that you are worthy of our love and our time. We pray that you will be honored in this time of our uh, special gathering for today. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We thank the Lord that uh, despite the situation we are in, God can still make a way for us to connect with one another. And we praise the Lord that in Bacolod, we are back to our GCQ. Uh, very few of us are having to stay in this situation. Metro Manila, uh, GCQ, and Iloilo, and I think uh, three other places. But the rest of the country has been uh, set to MGCQ, where we came from also uh, several weeks ago. We thank the Lord for this development, and we look forward that uh, there will be an easing of the situation more and more so that our face-to-face -face gathering can be possible sometime soon. We are thankful to the Lord for this special time that uh, we can continue with our worship at this GCQ status of our community. And I know that I, I, in Trinity Church, uh, you have been following the theme of being uh, focused in the Lord Jesus Christ as we maintain our fellowship, fixing our eyes on Jesus. And this morning's message, I have this entitled, Focus on Jesus. Our text, Luke chapter 18, verses 35 to 43. Luke chapter 18 verses 35 to 43 this is actually the account of uh, bartimaeus that blind man who was healed by the lord jesus christ and so from this account we will learn from what this blind man has gone through and hopefully we will have uh, the faith that that blind man had so that we are able to cope and even come out victorious even in this pandemic situation. So, in uh, Luke chapter 18, beginning verse 35, this is what the Bible says. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd coming by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. This beggar who has been doing this kind of thing for years and years in his life, finally has come to this breakthrough. A possible game changer in his life so he was just uh, 
concern why people seem to be uh, moving. Uh, many of them are passing. And so he asked, what's happening? The people said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Remember their answer, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by or maybe passing through. And here, notice how the people have addressed Jesus Christ and how this blind man called on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in this mes morning's message uh, entitled, Focus on Jesus, I'd like to highlight uh, on the four aspects of our lives. The mind, the ears, the heart, and the feet. Here, when the people said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Look how Bartimaeus called out to Jesus. He said, he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Where did he get that phrase? When he asked the people who was passing by, the people said, Jesus of Nazareth. But then, when this blind man started to call out on Jesus, he said, Jesus, son of David. Why did he say son of David? You know, that address, son of David, all Israel is familiar with that. It actually means he is looking at Jesus as the promised Messiah. That's one of the, the way the Messiah will be called. He is the son of David. So all along, while the people were taught differently, his mind was taught by faith. There was faith already going on in his mind. If this is Jesus of Nazareth, they are saying, the blind man Bartimaeus said, he must be the Messiah. And so he called out on him, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You know, in this world, our minds are taught with so many things. Some are very practical, pragmatic, but many of these are not inclined to faith anymore. Are our minds taught by faith? Is there that faith element that goes around in mind so that even if many other things we read, we see, or we are taught of, even if these things that are taught to us seem to be anti-faith, we still are able to hold on to our faith. Bartimaeus had a mind taught by faith. That's amazing. And I'm thankful that he responded that way. But look, after he called on Jesus saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In verse 39, this is how the people responded. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. He was rebuked. Maybe other people may, may have been ridiculing him. Hey, you blind man, shut up. You know, if, if you are part of this marginalized uh, group of the society, they are not really given respect. They are not regarded to as people who are important, especially during these days. They might be considered nuisance, unimportant people. And so, when a VIP is passing and Bartimaeus was shouting there by the roadside, the people were annoyed, perhaps. They were annoyed. But all along, this hurting person this needy man realized that this is his chance. So while he was calling on Jesus, and the people said, you shut up, you be quiet. You know how he responded? He even called out all the more. That's what the Bible tells us, you see. Those who, who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more. He shouted all the more and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
in the world today, many will also come to our ears. I don't know what you are paying attention to, especially in this world full of fake news. This materialistic, oftentimes anti-God or ignoring God totally, this world that has not been grounded in faith can drown us and overwhelm us to a point that if you have very little shaky faith, you might even lose it. But Bartimaeus, as people tried to stop him, he decided to shout all the more. If your faith is challenged, would it intensify your desire to even stay stronger in your faith or will it bring you down? You die down and said, okay, okay, maybe you're right. I'll just keep this to myself then. But Bartimaeus, a blind man as he was, refused to listen to the whispers or the shouts of the clamor of people of the world trying to discourage him, trying to distract him, trying to ridicule him or push him away, he decided he will shout all the more and call on Jesus. That's an amazing response from a man who have been used to being sidelined, ignored all along the people or the crowd have thought they can easily brush him away. After all, he is unimportant. He is, he is a nobody in the society. But the faith of Bartimaeus, his ears know how to listen to that voice of faith. He decided to call on Jesus all the more. You know, this uh, world that we live in today, even among Christians, because of this pandemic, many are used to not coming to church anymore. And so, uh, it's only now also that I realize why in Hebrews chapter 10, it says there, do not forsake the gathering of of the saints are some are in the habit of doing before yeah i took it okay yeah that's that it that's the the tendency but did you know that that verse is connected to the end times it said do not forsake the gathering of the saints are some are in the habit of doing but all the more we are told to pursue this even as we see the last day approaching. And so all along pala, that passage in the book of Hebrews, which was written on the first century, that's almost 2,000 years ago, had that prophetic element already. And so I've noticed that even after this pandemic, should the Lord deliver us from this soon, many people may have been used to not attending the gathering of the believers. They made it a habit, as some are in the habit of doing. And so, they will deprive all the more their ears to listen to these teachings of faith. But you see, what happened? When Bartimaeus, he decided to keep shouting and calling on the Lord, finally, in verse 40, it says, Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? You know, I thought of that myself. If the Lord will ask me today, June, what do you want me to do for you? 
Am I prepared to answer? Do I really know and understand what is that main thing? So, if in, in these uh, stories about uh, fantasy there, there's these legends, like if there is that, uh, that giant who is kept in the, gen the genie, who is kept in the battle, suddenly will be released, and we said, ho, 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 thank you that I'm free at last. Now I'm giving you whatever you wish for. So what do you wish? What would that be? If the Lord will tell us, what do you want me to do for you? Will you say, Lord, I want to be rich. Give me a lot of uh, a vast land, a big house, a beautiful car. Is that what you're going to ask the Lord? Or will you say, if I'm a pastor, I want to be a pastor of a mega church with, with uh, 300,000 membership attending regularly. Will that be what I'll ask? I know it will vary. If each one of us will be asked by the Lord today, what do you want me to do for you? We may answer differently. But Bartimaeus, he knew exactly what to answer. Without any hesitation, look at what happened here. When Jesus says, said, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he said. Lord, I want to see, he replied. Now look at, look at how he once more responded to the Lord Jesus Christ. When the people were calling him Jesus of Nazareth, Bartimaeus called Jesus Christ Jesus, the son of David. The Pharisees and even those, uh, the, the people there in the, uh, during the time of Jesus Christ, normally they call him, because he's a teacher, they call him Rabbi. Rabbi. But look at how Bartimaeus addressed Jesus again. When Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He did not say rabbi, although that's uh, the majority, the way the majority would call Jesus. Instead, he said, Lord, Adonai, Lord, I want, he said, Lord, I want to see. He replied, Lord, he called Jesus Christ, Lord. He addressed Jesus Christ as Lord. During those days, nobody, or very few maybe, would address Jesus Christ as Lord because that's a position of great authority. Even the religious leaders, they were just addressed rabbi. And they already are happy with that. Normally, they don't use Lord just to call anybody Lord out of respect. It, there must be something divine for an Israelite to address somebody, Lord. And this blind man, Bartimaeus, had that. He, he said to Jesus, Lord, I want my sight back. Wow. Very clear focus. He understood whom he was speaking to and he knew exactly what he wanted to. So, the first point, I said, it is, he had a mind taught by faith. He had ears that listened to faith. And thirdly, he has a heart whose passion was fueled by faith. The passionate heart of this man, he knew exactly what he was pursuing and he understood that somehow by putting his faith, his focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, the breakthrough would come. And so, when Jesus Christ asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see. Lord, I want to see. Perhaps with tears in his eyes, with all of this anguish, with all the pain, the rejection he has been having for years, the hurts, 
that stick in his heart. Finally, the moment he has been waiting for has come. He is now with the son of David, the Messiah, with the Lord face to face. And he was so blessed to be asked, what do you want me to do for you? And so he said, Lord, I want my sight back. He, this he was very passionate. All along, that was his dream. He wants to see. What is yours? What's the passion of your heart? So that when Jesus Christ will come point blank anytime, ask us, what do you want me to do for you? What will you say? Bartimaeus had it very clear in his heart. He will ask the Lord to heal his eyes so that he could see. And you see how the Lord responded from there. This is how Jesus Christ responded in verse 42. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. All along, the Lord has been paying attention to the faith of this blind man. That's why Jesus Christ came, said, He came to make the blind see and to reveal that those who can see are actually blind. You know, the Pharisees were offended by that when Jesus Christ made that statement that the Son of Man came in order to make the blind see, but at the same time, so that those who can see may realize that they are blind. And this time, this is a very literal fulfillment to this man, Bartimaeus. The Lord granted the desire of his heart. Praise be to God for answering his prayer. And the Lord said, because, said, receive your sight, your faith has healed you. Because of that faith, Bartimaeus, that I can see in you, receive your sight. Be healed. Let your eyes be opened because of that faith. You know, the world has always been advocating, even when I was small, and I thought, that's, that's, that's true, that's practical. You know what the world believes? To see is to believe. That teaching is universal all over the, all over the world. To see is to believe. But Jesus Christ has been teaching us again and again to believe is to see. The world has nothing to do with what the Lord Jesus Christ is actually teaching us. They insist, the world insists, no, 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 no. For me, to see is to believe. But Jesus Christ is saying, believe and you will see. That's why when Jesus Christ rose from the grave, and he showed himself to the disciples. And Thomas was not there. Then the Lord left. When the other disciples told Thomas, we, we saw the Lord. He was here. We saw him. We saw him with our eyes. We were able to, to hear him with our ears. And this is what Thomas said. Well, unless I'm able to put my finger and his hands where the nails were hammered in, and I'll be able to put my hands on that side where the, the spear was uh, put on, on his side and that blood and water came out, he said, I will not believe. And finally, in one of their gatherings, with all the doors, the windows were closed, they were all together in one, uh, praying, Jesus Christ just came through. Without opening any door, he just can pass through walls. And he said to Thomas, Here I am, Thomas. Come. Put your hands on my, put your fingers on my hands 
and here on my side. But you know, Thomas did not do that anymore. He just bowed before God and said, My Lord and my God. And you know what Jesus Christ said? You thought you are blessed because you're able to see me, but blessed are those who believe even if they do not see. That's why in Hebrews 11, 1 said, Faith is the essence of things hoped for, the assurance of things unseen. That faith is very important to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he said, because of your faith, you are healed. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. So we saw in Bartimaeus a mind taught by faith, ears that listens to faith, a heart that is whose passion is fueled by faith. And lastly, feet that walks or feet that walk by faith. Huh? Feet. So we, um, yes, we still walk with our feet, but actually, our, even as we use our feet, we still walk by faith. We still walk by faith. Remember what happened to Peter? When there was a storm in the middle of that Sea of Galilee, and they were in a boat, and Jesus Christ was walking on water. At first they thought he was a ghost, but then when Jesus Christ got closer, said, Don't be afraid, it's, it, is, it is I. And then Peter said, Lord, if it's you, then let me come to you. And the Lord Jesus Christ, Come, Peter, come. And despite the raging storm, the strong waves and wind, when Peter was looking at the Lord Jesus Christ, he got off the boat and was able to walk on water. That feet of his was able to float on the water because he was fixing his eyes on Jesus. But the moment he looked around and saw how big the waves were, how they tossed the boat and the wind, then after taking his eyes away from Jesus to see the storm and the surrounding, he began to sink to a point that he had to cry out, Lord, help! And Jesus Christ has to reach out to him and said, Oh, you have little faith. You know, we are given by the Lord the feet to walk, but even as we walk with our feet, it's still important that our feet walk by faith, our lives. So look at what, what this uh, uh, blind man did. He immediately decided, I'm going to follow you, Lord. Now I can walk. Now I can see. I will follow you. How many of us have been, I, our eyes have been opened by the Lord too? We have been saved by the blood of Jesus. But what was our long-term response? Are we following him? Or are we spectators of what God is doing not actively participating in what the Lord wants us to do. And I pray that this man, Bartimaeus, will become a great inspiration for us and see the importance of faith in our daily life. Remember, we are responsible for our own mind. May our mind be taught regularly by faith. In our ears, we don't have to listen to everything that the world, that Satan, self, the flesh would, would tell us. But instead, we choose to listen to the Lord and cultivate our faith. In our heart, I pray that we will have the passion that is fueled by faith. Not a passion fueled by greed. Not a passion fueled by, by, by our own pride, by materialism by selfish ambition, but fueled by faith in God, knowing that what we do, we do it by faith in the Lord Jesus.
Let's continue to walk, move on, using our faith, uh, our feet, and still walk by faith. Just like what Apostle Paul said, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Praise the Lord. I pray that the life of Bartimaeus will be a blessing to us. Lord Jesus, we would like to thank you. Thank you for your word. Your word is alive. Your word is constant. Your word doesn't change. Your word is time, timeless and changing. Help us, Lord, as your people, as we have received your word, I pray that the power of your word will ignite faith to believe even what is impossible around us, especially in this season, Lord, of COVID-19. May we be able to sing the song from the top of our heart lungs, Lord, say, let faith arise, Lord Jesus.
Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 clearly indicated that in this earthly life we live, we will have struggles. This struggle consists of two opposing forces. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There is good news in this battle. We know who comes out the winner. One of the ways God provided for us is through prayer. The Bible is full of instructions about prayer, about how to approach God, what to pray about. The Bible also gives us the assurance that God listens and answers our prayers. This morning, Tain of the prayer and intercession team would like to pray for each one of us about the healing of trauma. I thank the Lord for this opportunity to pray with you about trauma, fear, and anxiety. Paul Maxwell says, trauma is a certain kind of suffering the kind that overwhelms one's ability to cope, a whole class of wounds that cripple, a wound that buries itself deep in our consciousness, a tragedy too heavy for us. It happened in the past, but asserts itself over and over in the present. Through the years of serving God, working with other people, and enjoying the gift of family and friends, I've had my share of hurts, misunderstandings, betrayals, and loss. In all this, I have learned to self-preserve, enjoying the four corners of my room, away from people. I think it best to be alone because no one can hurt me and no one can abuse my yeses. Outside, it's as if everything was operational. I was up and running. But inside, I was merely existing and not living. Three years ago, someone outrightly told me, Nami, an ka kitya mag-isahan, no, no? And it hit me. The Lord made me realize right there and then that it was trauma brought about being with people that hurt me. The hurt made me isolate and self-preserve. From then onwards, I have felt God's hands carrying me through the process of healing, overflowing me with His love, showing me that I should never be afraid to lose myself for Him. Isaiah 41.10 states, So do not fear, for God is with you. Do not be dismayed, for He is our God. He will strengthen you and help you. He will uphold you with His righteous right hand. Trauma is not a life sentence. It's not something that has to control us forever. No trauma is bigger than God. Let me invite you into a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we praise you for revealing yourself to us in the most personal way today. Your word says that if there is unforgiveness, it should be dealt with before praying. Therefore, we release anger, resentment, and wrong attitude before you now. We lay down all our fears, anxieties, and trauma and forgive those who have wronged us. I specifically forgive if the Lord is bringing to memory anyone who may have caused you trauma, I will give you this time to forgive them. Thank you, Jesus. We specifically forgive the leaders of our nation and city for the trauma they have inadvertently given due to many of their decisions in this COVID-19 outbreak. We forgive them and we bless them with wisdom and supernatural revelation to see the truth in this situation. We bless them with strength and may their love for the country grow strong as they seek you. In behalf of those who are battling with COVID and those who lost their loved ones to it, we forgive the people who have turned their backs in fear of acquiring the virus. We bless them and release them into your hands, O God. Father, thank you for the life you have given the people who are praying with me right now. Together in prayer, we lift up to you the trauma they are facing. This may be from stressful situations, physical or psycho-emotional hurts, both in the past and at present. We know what they are dealing with. You know what is in their hearts. We declare healing from all the traumas that came from relational problems, 
traumas from any kind of sickness, trauma from accidents, and trauma from abandonment and abuse. We also declare healing from all hurt and all pain in Jesus' name. We come against denials of any form that stops your truth from penetrating in our hearts. Take away all fear, anxiety, negative thinking, doubt, and confusion, and any lies that come from the enemy. In Jesus' name, arrest our mind and heart and cause us to take every thought captive in your word. Teach us to only think about things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. We declare every area of our life, spirit, soul, and body, covered by the precious blood of Christ. We declare total healing and restoration over us right now. Teach us to live in the freedom you have for us in John 10.10, 10, to live abundantly and not merely exist or survive in this present life. We declare abundance in our faith and love for you as we spend time with you and your word. Remind us daily to declare who you say we are in you and what we can do in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for freeing us from the traumas in our lives. You are our Lord. We align ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to be prayed for, please contact Sister Paz or Sister Isis. Let's come to the Lord in a word of prayer. Lord God, we are honored to always be in your presence. We bless your name as we are gathered together, even not physically by now, but in spirit, we are still one. Thank you for the life of Bartimaeus. Thank you for the inspiration of what that blind man rejected by society and yet healed by you. What an inspiration we had from the life of Bartimaeus. I pray that all of us, even in the midst of this pandemic, will continue to grow in our faith in you. And now, may the grace of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. <laughs>